from there, there was a... This was like a quasi-formal... I said swanky in another episode, I guess maybe the last episode. It was swanky-ish, it was formal-ish. It was like a fundraiser for this initiative. From what I gather, they... They're trying to introduce programs that help young boys um, stand up for... Um, stand up whenever they see violence against women or see violence or sexual harassment in public. So it's like a training course of sorts for young people, for young boys. And so they had this fundraiser in this like baller atmosphere downtown, uh, close to City Hall. And there, there was a harpist, well, somebody who was kind of classically trained in a variety of instruments, whether it was like English horn, uh, oboe, recorder, clarinet. And then there was like a, uh, a dude playing kind of like banjo and string instruments. It was more like a folk kind of a thing. It was a very old kind of a seniors crowd. Most of the people there were in the senior range. Uh, there was a few young people, one of which I actually worked with three years ago uh, during the, the federal election. And reconnected with her. She was cool. She also had, she kind of like pivoted in her career. I guess her career is really taking off um, from a standpoint of fundraising and so on. And anyway, the, I, guess, <laughs> I guess the moral of the, what I'm trying to get out with that whole little rant, sub rant was even that initiative there, like that fundraising event. You know, being in the presence of so many, I don't want to say ballers, but people who are more like accomplished in their own careers and established in their own careers. And, you know, they've accomplished many things in their own lives. It gave me a bit of a, I don't want to say, you know, motivation or anything like that. But it kind of gave me a, first of all, it was definitely a good networking opportunity to get my name out there a bit uh, I was the dedicated photographer also recorded some some audio so I gotta produce something for them so again something outside of yourself that has nothing to do with you specifically just doing a service for somebody else and I also wanted to say as far as it being a quote unquote swanky baller kind of a thing there's something to be said for when you're constantly engaging with people who are maybe not maybe somewhat in the same position of life as you or maybe not much higher not much lower you're all in the general ballpark i don't want to say it creates this kind of like echo chamber of maybe not crabs in a bucket but definitely um you don't expand your horizons right and it has nothing to do with the age specifically like even the the the, the former quote-unquote colleague or quote-unquote co-worker seeing them kind of on an upward path you're like good you know what i mean like god damn sometimes you you hear everybody's story becomes so um whether it's whether you're on a notch of a downtrodden skid row notch and then maybe the next step up is you're all somewhat quasi um you're trying to legitimize yourselves through menial, sub-level, low-level work. So those are the people that you interact with constantly. And you're all kind of like, <laughs> I mean, maybe it is craps in the bucket. Maybe it is. I mean, that's what it is. You know, it's a craps in the bucket kind of a thing. Because what happens when you're dealing with these other higher, quote-unquote higher class people who have way more way 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 more disposable income people who don't have to worry about like they could be in peru and at the drop of a hat you know what i mean <laughs> you know what i'm saying everybody there had this like well traveled um not, not traveled extensively and so on and so forth so it makes you kind of think bigger than what you're doing you know what i mean you're like oh maybe maybe um maybe i should think it's kind of like it's like envisioning success, right? Envisioning success um, can c 
creating a script for oneself that isn't so poverty mentality. I think I've, I've also had this poverty mentality, zero out of ten theme throughout this show. This was probably throughout the series of Randcast episodes. This was definitely one. This was definitely the. There was no poverty mentality happening here. It's like <laughs> let's all eat expensive, you know, chocolate and weird like pastries and. At one point, I was assigned to like pop the various like bottles of booze, which I hadn't done in a while, so I felt weird because I like, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, we're gonna go pop, we're gonna pop champagne right now. I'm like, I haven't touched a bottle of booze in two and a half years. This is gonna be interesting. But I mean, nobody cares, right? This is the <laughs> this is the other thing. People that high up in the, I mean, I know there's this perception that rich people judge others. But because I was in the presence of them, because I was there specifically for the event, you almost become, I know it sounds, maybe it's weird to put it like this, but you almost become one of them. You know what I mean? In the same way that you become one of the downtrodden when you're downtrodden, you become skid row or fiendish when you're one of with, you're interacting with those people. When you're constantly hanging around people that work out, or whatever that's what you that's what you kind of become when you become you know you become a fitness person when you when you're hanging around a bunch of musicians and you even have an inkling of musical talent or whatever you become that becomes the sort of um, environment you identify with you know what i mean i mean maybe that's not <laughs> i didn't articulate that well but the point still stands you know you hang around successful people you're gonna you're gonna eventually envision success and you're gonna start to think a little bit differently you know what i mean uh, and i guess it started you see you see what i'm saying like it started with a random invite to the gallery going to the gallery and it, you know the gallery doesn't necessarily only attract quote-unquote ballers and rich people but it's definitely a different, it's definitely more cultured kind of an environment than, say, going to the McDonald's across the street <laughs> to hijack the Wi-Fi. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Or, like, yeah, like going to second, you know, even even within the, 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 the coffee world or the, the restaurant world, it's like second cup in McDonald's is very different, <laughs> very different clientele. You know what I mean? Hanging out at Second Cop is a whole different experience than hanging out at McDonald's. That's the, second, the simplest way to put it. You know what I mean? Anyway. Am I coming up to the end here? Almost. So I guess some final thoughts on the whole weekend. And then, yeah, the seniors thing. Like, a, a very yeah, he's senile. The great uncle. He's, se- he's senile and maybe has dementia now. But at one point, he was balling. He's still balling, te- technically. I mean, he might not have cool what's going on, but his... <laughs> His um his financial situation is the same technically, theoretically. So again, the weekend of not the the post crisis prevention and then being quasi catapulted into this 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 other universe and world of successful people or people who are on the road to increase success, maybe rewired a bit of the thinking. Um, oh yeah sorry um beyond the bb i don't know how the reception to all these social service kind of narrations seems to be going um i'm on the way to the, the health center right now to go grab a bunch of the pamphlets so i can read them uh kind of you know treat some of the episodes of the rant cast to do a bit more good than just have the anecdotal stories of how I've overcome shit. Anyway, have a good rest of your day, folks. Peace.